In 1871, Charles Darwin published Descent of Man. It has often been asserted that man's origin can never be known, he began, but ignorance more frequently begets confidence than knowledge. Nevertheless, according to a recent study, early humans still had brains that were similar to giant apes. Modern humans just recently gained our high mental faculties, between 1.7 million and 1.5 million years ago. This indicates that a million years after the Homo genus emerged and the first Homo erectus left Africa, the distinctive brain of modern humans evolved. The majority of these small stocky fossils, which have been discovered in China and Indonesia, had a peculiar skull shape and prominent brow ridges. The discovery disproves the notion that humans' frontal lobes, which process sophisticated cognitive functions like social reasoning, tool usage and language, evolved around the time of the transition from Australopithecus, between 2.8 million and 2.5 million years ago. What's more, there is much disagreement about whether the fossils from Asia and Africa should be grouped together as Homo erectus, or whether the African specimens are sufficiently distinct to be referred to as Homo ergaster. Since more researchers have redefined the species Homo erectus, to some it now solely includes fossils from East Asia, even though many out-of-Africa theorists don't want to allow any discussion that humans evolved anywhere but the Dark Continent. Homo ergaster, which has replaced many of the earlier African fossils once classified as belonging to Homo erectus, is now thought to be the ancestor of Homo erectus. Homo ergaster is now considered to be one of our direct ancestors, whereas the redefined Asian Homo erectus is now largely thought to be a side branch on our family tree. Nonetheless, some researchers continue to hold the belief that all of these specimens belong to the species Homo erectus, which included humans with a wide variety of physical characteristics, and a widespread geographic and temporal dispersion. Even the question of whether the two Homo erectus populations in Asia belong to the same species is up for discussion. Even if the populations in China and Indonesia belong to the same species, it is currently believed that the two populations were not related, and that the Chinese population arrived later and from a different source than the Indonesian population. Previously, it was thought that the Asian Homo erectus descended from a single group in Africa before dispersing throughout the continent. It's possible that Homo ergaster, aka African Homo erectus, was the first human species to exit Africa. By 1.75 million years ago, this species had migrated across southern Eurasia, according to fossil evidence. Asian Homo erectus, their offspring, then moved east and arrived in Southeast Asia by at least 1.6 million years ago. An alternative idea, however, contends that hominins left Africa before Homo ergaster emerged, maybe over 2 million years ago, before the earliest records of Homo erectus in Asia. These hominins may have been Australopithecines or, more likely, a form of early human that resembled Homo habilis in appearance. According to this view, the Homo erectus from Georgia, aka Homo georgicus, fills in a gap in the evolution of Homo erectus and Homo ergaster. Maybe more importantly, there was significant gene flow between populations in Africa and Eurasus and Homo ergaster evolved outside of Africa. DNA studies have helped this notion acquire increasing traction in recent years. An expansion out of Africa occurred around 1.9 million years ago, and gene exchange between Asian and African populations started around 1.5 million years ago, according to genetic evidence. Additional tangible proof from crucial regions of Eurasia, such as Iran, Afghanistan and Pakistan is required, but geopolitics now make this challenging. Homo ergaster did have the physical and cultural characteristics that would have made it easier for them to disperse through the dry regions of northern Africa and the Middle East, yet there is still disagreement about whether they were the first of our ancestors to leave Africa. These characteristics included a modern body type with an effective striding gait suited to traveling over long distances an intelligence sufficiently advanced to cope with unfamiliar environments, though this did not require a brain size much larger than Homo habilis, with an average brain size of 610 cubic centimeters, improved technology, and a diet that included more meat and increased the food supply options in seasonally arid environments. Curiously, some researchers suggest that Homo erectus, like Neanderthals, went extinct due to climate change, which is one of the most insanely idiotic theories I have ever heard. 
In point of fact, both of these groups survived multiple ice ages, interglacial periods, pole shifts, meteor strikes, and every environmental challenge possible, but mysteriously went extinct only when modern humans arrived. Back to reality, and researchers instead looked at fossilized endocasts, or the area of the skull that housed the brain, to assess how the organ changed through time because brains are composed of soft tissues that don't fossilize. The scientists compared the endocasts of 110 modern humans with those of 81 chimpanzees, 27 bonobos, 43 gorillas and 32 orangutans in order to compare the structures of primitive or early brains with those of a modern human brain. The great apes are the closest living relatives of humans, in case that is not obvious. Then, by comparing the endocasts from almost 40 ancient human skulls, including those from Australopithecus sediba, Homo erectus and Homo nalidi, they were able to assess how primitive or advanced their brains likely were. However, due to the lack of unbiased methods for interpreting brain structure from endocasts when the researchers first had the idea for this study, in the late 1990s, the endeavor seemed unachievable. But later, developments in computed tomography and other imaging techniques enabled researchers to quantify the relationships between the brain and the endocast in living organisms. The gyri and sulci, or folds and furrows, as well as the vascular structures surrounding the brain, left imprints in the finely detailed endocasts, the researchers discovered. Evolutionary changes, such as one section of the brain gradually moving farther toward the back of the brain over time, could be seen as the researchers made their way slowly through the fossil endocasts. For instance, a reliable indicator that the Broca region in front of the precentral sulcus expanded during the evolution of humans is the precentral sulcus, backward movement during evolutionary time. Because they are engaged in speech production and other higher cognitive functions in contemporary humans, this region and its environs are particularly fascinating. The research showed that the earliest members of the human genus had a brain with a frontal lobe that resembled great apes, after comparing the fossil endocasts with those of the great apes and modern humans. Like their forebears, the Australopithecines, the earliest populations of our genus possessed brains that were relatively basic and ape like. According to the experts, these include fossils connected to early Homo erectus and Homo habilis. When did modern Homo sapiens brains evolve? Fossils from Ethiopia, the site of the earliest known protohuman remains, date to 2.8 million years ago, but their brain cases have not been preserved. There are no intact Homo endocasts over the subsequent 1 million years, unfortunately. The question of when our sophisticated brain evolved became even more obscure due to this one million year gap in the record. Nonetheless, the researchers noted that examinations of Homo erectus skulls helped to clarify this discovery. The 1.8 million year old skulls, which belong to people who died between puberty and old age, were particularly well preserved, and were known as the Dmanisai individuals after an archaeological site in Georgia. The Dmanisai fossils are crucial because they demonstrate that early archaic humans still possessed a primitive brain, comparable to Australopithecus and big apes, around 1.8 million years ago. Truth be told, although Homo erectus had an ape-like frontal lobe, they still led amazing lives. These uncivilized, illiterate savages left Africa, survived the hard climatic conditions of Eurasia, produced a wide range of tools, participated in the acquisition of meat, and assisted the elderly members of the group. As stated, it is believed that the Dmanisai humans were among the first Homo populations to leave Africa. Researchers identified evidence of the restructured brain region in skulls from Africa and Southeast Asia that dated to 1.5 million years ago and younger, suggesting that the sophisticated frontal lobe likely did not begin to emerge until approximately 1.7 million years ago in Africa. For instance, the researchers uncovered endocasts that resembled modern Homo frontal lobes in the remains of Homo erectus people who lived fewer than 1.5 million years ago, and whose remains were discovered in Southeast Asia. This discovery demonstrates that a sophisticated frontal lobe, formerly thought to be a distinguishing feature of the earliest humans in Africa, emerged relatively late and was not required for early humans to leave Africa, according to the study's authors. 
Emphasis on a stark division between our genus and previous relatives is a holdover from a time when there were fewer fossils, and human evolution was seen to be a straightforward linear process leading to us modern humans. In that setting, the evolution of the species Homo was viewed as a biological revolution linked to the production of stone tools, and the development of a larger, more sophisticated brain. Since then, scientists have discovered species and specimens of the genus with smaller brains, and learned that stone tools were created as early as 3.3 million years ago, which is much earlier than the expected origin of our genus. The truth is that numerous characteristics that define us as modern humans arose over time, not always in a tidy bundle. Although the reason why human brains developed a sophisticated frontal lobe is still unknown, scientists do offer several theories. It may be an example of how the capacity to acquire a new behavior can lead to changes in genetic makeup and phenotype, or outward appearance. In this instance, it's plausible that the brain regions in charge of language and other difficult cognitive processes developed in a setting that encouraged and required protolinguistic communication. In fact, scientists believe that cultural innovation and the remodeling of the brain brought about by evolution have a positive feedback loop. Having said that, we do not know if these early cultures spoke in a manner similar to that of modern humans, even if the brain mechanisms necessary for early language existed about 1.5 million years ago. Instead, it seems likely that early humans possessed some sort of proto-language that, in the context of brain culture co-evolution, encouraged the development of certain brain structures, and these brain structures encouraged the development of proto-language. While Homo erectus cranial capacity is less than that of Homo sapiens, it is nevertheless significantly more than that of the Australopiths. In fact, Homo erectus and Australopithecus differ from one another more than Homo erectus and Homo sapiens from one another. The cranial capabilities of Homo rudolfensis and Homo habilis fit into this gap, and there is little doubt that their relationships are far from over. Furthermore, this reaffirms that, at least in light of the current fossil record, there is still no proof of a distinct border for the origin of brain anatomy in the human genus. When humans and Australopiths are compared, as well as between the oldest human species, the majority of the changes in brain structure are mostly attributed to variations in the average size of the encephalon. The absence of macroscopic differences in the cortex, the limitations of the fossil samples, or the difficulty of interpreting the morphology of the brain from the internal traces left on the cranium, may all contribute to the difficulty in identifying brain traits associated with the evolution of the genus other than size. Naturally, this does not rule out the potential that the origin of the human brain may be connected to alterations that are not visible to the naked eye in the general anatomy, such as alterations to the cells, tissues, neuronal connections, or neurotransmitters. Homo erectus, the first ancestor of modern humans, probably endured in a tropical garden of Eden in island Southeast Asia until at least 117,000 years ago, when modern humans started to emerge from our unidentified cradle of humankind. <laughs>